Welcome to Cardinals Cover 2 with Craig Grealoux and Mike Jarecki. Cardinals Cover 2 is brought to you by Arizona Cardinals Podcasts. Visit azcardinals.com slash podcasts. From the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center, here's Craig Grealoux and Mike Jarecki. Well, back after the weekend and back to normal, so to speak. A couple of special edition episodes of Cardinals Cover 2 last week around the signings, the free agent signings on Thursday and Friday. And we're going to do that as much as possible because I think we both enjoy it, MJ. And, of course, I'm sure the Cardinal fans do as well. You hear from the player and then... Fortunately, we're able to bring them on in here and talk to them even further. So pay attention to more of those as we progress here throughout this offseason. But uh, it's good to be back here. Kind of a little bit of a normalcy, if you will, as far as what we do here on Cards Cover 2. Yeah, and I think we're you know, we're approaching probably the tail end of the second wave of free agency. And today's the first day where teams can start bringing in 30 visits. So in other words, UID players, you bring them in. College prospects. College prospects. And then you can... You know, put them on the chalkboard. You cannot work them out at your facility. So if you want to work them out just to kind of check all the boxes, you do that probably at their, their college or maybe in a bubble if it's uh, weather uh, you know weather issues anyway. So Cardinals will continue to do that. Um, you know, since we left the show on Friday, they have two other signings. We'll get into that, how it affects it. But uh, just really exciting. I mean, I, I know that we look back at last year, and I don't think anyone saw that coming, even Vegas. I mean, they had them at five and a half, and Pro Football Focus had them at seven and a half. We just didn't see that coming. But a lot of excitement in the building, a lot of excitement in the community. And I think it's because, A, what they've done so far, uh, obviously hiring Kingsbury, you know, the unknown, but very innovative when it comes to off- offense, and then having the first pick in the draft. And, you know, they've definitely added starters on both sides of the ball. So, a lot of excitement around the Valley. Now, we talked about this. You know, the, the draft is good for filling, you know, some needs, but you're really trying to build for the future there. So you got to hit on some of these free agents, and I think Steve and his staff has done a really good job. Yeah, it's not about winning the offseason. It's about getting better, improving yourself right. in the offseason, at least on paper. Of course, no one will know until we actually get out on the field, both during minicamp and, of course, training camp before the season begins in September. With that here on this Monday afternoon, let's take off and tell you what's ahead on the show here this afternoon. Right now, how we – project the offensive line to look like in 2019. Free agency, as MJ said, entering its second full week. We take a look back at week one with respect to the Cardinals moves. It took 16 years for Terrell Suggs to make it back home. And of course, your questions via social media using the hashtag cards cover two, hashtag cards cover two, using that hashtag to get your questions in via Twitter and Instagram. We do that every show here, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 3 p.m here from the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center. But first, the news of the day. And yes, the roster has increased by two since Friday's show. Defensive back Josh Shaw and offensive lineman Max Garcia each were signed to one-year contracts, both depth moves, which is nothing wrong with that. You need depth, and we saw it last season with regards to the Cardinals and how far deep they had to go into the roster, especially on the offensive line. But let's touch on these two and first The most recent one, and that is Shaw, who was signed earlier today, a one-year contract. The defensive back last season spent uh, split time with both Kansas City and Tampa Bay. Look, he's... He hasn't had a lot of opportunity, but he is young, only 26 years old, and he's got good size, 6'1", 200, and he does have some familiarity with the Cardinals with respects to Vance Joseph, who was Shaw's position coach when Shaw was a rookie with the Bengals in 2015. So something to keep in mind because familiarity helps, but as you pointed out, MJ, it also can hurt you as well because, yeah, that coach knows all about you. It's either a positive, hey, let's bring him in, or it's like, no, no, no. I dealt with him. I don't want him in this building. Yeah, we do that all the time in the media. You know, you look at a guy that gets released or, you know, and then you look like Vance Joseph. I mean, how many, you know, former Broncos are going to be here? How many former Bronco coaches? Um, But also at the same time, and I can give you an example, there was a couple wide receivers in free agency that a lot of people thought the Cardinals should go after. And they said, well, you know, they, they have must have somebody on the staff that's worked with him or knows another coach. And, and I said on the other side, maybe they know too much information, so maybe it's not a good thing. Yeah, I mean, listen, this team still needs a slot corner. 
Uh, he's played safety. He's played corner. He's a really good open field tackler. You mentioned the size. So, um, you know, at this point in time, I'm sure the Cardinals, you know, are going to look at some other uh, defensive backs. You know, we talk about, you know, David Amerson and, and Dietrich Nichols still on the roster. So maybe there's a possibility that guy is on the roster. But uh, to me, when you go against these slot receivers, usually they're veteran guys. I'm not saying guys like Christian Kirk can't come in and do it. And I want a veteran in there now. Uh, obviously, having Patrick Peterson and Robert Alford on the on the outside, and he gets a chance to play inside. So, um, nice signing for depth, special teams, and again, he's a really good open field tackler, and that's something the Cardinals lacked at certain points last year on defense. Fifty five career games, including fourteen starts. So now Shaw on the roster, as is Garcia, six four, three hundred nine pound offensive lineman who certainly comes in and has that familiarity here with the Cardinals, Sean Kugler, as Garcia has spent four years in the NFL, all with the Broncos, and Kugler was the Broncos offensive line coach last season. So again, familiarity. He is coming off a torn ACL that was suffered in mid-November during practice last season. So just how healthy, how ready he'll be come 2019, who knows? But once again, you're looking at depth and looking at correcting that offensive line. Yeah, I mean, listen, if all three of these guys uh, can stay healthy, you're looking at three starters. And, and Steve Kime talked about addressing the offensive line. We haven't even really got into um, the draft and obviously free agency, but they've addressed the offensive line. We focused on offensive left guard and, and offensive right tackle, and that's what they've addressed on paper, and we're going to get into it. But if you look at the three guys they signed, between Marcus Gilbert, J.R. Sweezy, and then you throw in uh, Max Garcia, 206 career starts. So all these guys are starters, and, and we're going to give you the idea because if you look ahead, and we're just projecting, we're throwing darts, is that the Cardinals normally dress eight offensive linemen on game day. you got your five starters. We'll give you the three backups, and then they'll likely keep 10 on the roster. They like Colby Gossett. Gossett, um, you know, they're bringing in the linemen probably to, to talk to and possibly draft. So I think they're in a good spot since the heavy lifting is over, but it's all going to come down to protection and getting that running game going. Garcia started 41 of 57 games, predominantly played left guard, 32 starts. He started all games in 2016 and 2017 went on social media over the weekend to say quote it's my time thank you so much to the broncos for an incredible four years wouldn't change a thing not only not even this acl everything happens for a reason and my reason is to spend this next season with the cardinals hashtag be red see red hashtag comeback season and on instagram posted a picture of him arms outstretched outside the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals training facility. Yeah, and, you know, a friend told me a little fun fact. This guy's got some pipes. He can sing, and and, and I tweeted out, and he responded, and he was kind of, you know, being vague. And But at the end, he said, I really can sing, so uh, maybe he can get something going with some of the guys that are into music, including Robert Kemdichi. We want Kemdichi to be focused, but also we want these guys to have their lives away from the facility. So uh, personality, tough, another tough guy. Look at Sweezy, tough guy. Look at Marcus Gilbert, tough guy. So you can never have enough of those guys on the offensive line. And like I said, I, I think the heavy lifting is done there, but you're always looking to get better. Garcia, DJ Humphreys, Marcus Gilbert. Yeah. All three Florida Gators. Perfect. Perfect. Now, you, you going to do the chop? No, I'm not going to do the uh, gator chop. No, I'm not going to no, do that. I'm not going to do it? No. I'll do it. Go ahead. I'm doing it. Yeah, you need to work. Maybe when we get Garcia to help you do that as well here on Cards Cover 2. I'm going to chop you. One other offensive lineman note before we do a deep dive on the position. Center Mason Cole will be in show load this Wednesday. It's the latest stop on the Cardinals caravan. Cole, Big Red, Cardinals cheerleaders will all be in attendance at the Safeway at 900 West Deuce of Clubs from 4 to 6. For more information, check out azcardinals.com forward slash caravans. Was told the caravan stop in Yuma last month was the largest one yet. So good reaction when uh, Cardinals personnel go out outside of Maricopa County to give those uh, places uh, a little Cardinals taste. Have you ever s stood on the corner in Shello, Arizona? Uh, you're going to sing again? No. We've already discussed you oh. singing on this no, show. No, I remember it's Neil not... Rackers was up there a couple years when he made the pick for the Cardinals. I've never been. You? I have not, no. Hmm. That must be a pretty big corner. you take the show on the road? <laughs> to, to Sholo? <laughs> no, thanks. 
No, nothing against Sholo, but I'm just saying, like, I've never been, though. I've been to um, Whiskey Row. Okay. Uh, is that in Prescott? Prescott. Yeah, that was very nice. The Cardinals trained in um, uh, Emory. Emory Riddle. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, see, Yuma's on the borderline, what, here in, in uh, San Diego? Yeah, or so, California. Corner fellow. I mean, either or. It's the same thing. But you would see why there's a lot of fan base down there. Yeah. Stealing the Chargers fans, maybe. Formerly of San Diego. Formerly of San Diego, yeah. yeah. So, again, Cardinals caravan stopping Mason in Cole. Sholo. He's the only guy that played over 1,000 snaps. You, you mention that to him, he'll be like, this guy, this person really follows stuff. It hasn't missed a start, and it's a perfect transition here as we talk about the offensive line. And I don't think it's without – uh, disagreement here that offensive line if you're looking at the list of priorities in the offseason outside of you know when the head coaching change was made but as far as with the roster it was the number one position group that needed to be addressed this season or this offseason I should say the question was how and it's something we asked general manager Steve Keim last month at the combine I think we have to address it in free agency and we have to address it in the draft. I mean, you want to continually build for the long haul. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we have to develop the mentality up front and the physicality to run the football effectively. We know that as much as it's a passing league, you still have to stop the run and run the football to have success. And we didn't do either well last year. So those are two of the things that we have to fix. Well, they fixed the offensive line or have attempted to fix the offensive line via trade, Marcus Gilbert, and now free agency with J.R. Sweezy and Max Garcia. Next up is the draft, but it's interesting to hear Kime point to running the football because the run can set up play action, which set up the pass, and then all of a sudden it all comes back to being able to run the football, and the Cardinals were ineffective in that part offensively last season. Yeah, and they got the perfect back, David Johnson, and you know, change of pace back, and, and a guy like Chase Edmonds. We know that T.J. Logan is is really fast, and hopefully they could find a package for him because I think he can excel. Just get the ball in his hands, yards after catch, and then D.J. Foster obviously plays on teams, and he's a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield. So, uh, yeah, that's where it all starts. But uh, the fact that they got Sean Coogler. And they got some guys that like to uh, play the echo of the whistle, meaning they like they like to play physical, and they want to line up and beat the guy in front of you. That's what they get paid to do. At some point, we talk about schemes and X's and O's, and hey, just win a one-on-one -on -one matchup. The guy in front of you, you need to maul him, and I think that's the, what the focus. And I, I like the fact that they went out and addressed it, and we're not sitting here going, well, they still got to fill out the offensive line, and it's getting close to the draft, and all the good free agents are already dried up. That hasn't been the case. They are active from day one. And right now, let's take a look at how we project the 2019 offensive line with regards to who starts and in who perhaps is dressed on game day. You look at an entire brand new right side of the offensive line with Marcus Gilbert and J.R. Sweezy, and then Mason Cole or A.Q. Shipley at center. I'm comfortable with either one. It's going to be a nice battle to watch. It's not a a, a, a sexy battle, if you will, but you got two guys who have been very well equipped at that center position. And, of course, left guard Justin Pugh, left tackle DJ Humphreys. Pugh, of course, played right guard last season, seven stars, but because Sweezy, he predominantly has been a right guard during his NFL career, we think – uh, that that's how it's going to play out, at least right now. Pew on the left side and Sweezy on the right side. So there's your five projected starters against center. Could be a toss-up. Just look, you know, here's two guys. Go fight for it. Yeah, I don't think it's a toss-up. The Cardinals have invested in, in Mason Cole. See, you say that, though, and every time people count out Shipley. I'm not counting them out. I'm just – I don't think it's open. He, it's his job to lose. They, they draft – Whose job to lose? Cole? Mason Cole. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Shipley's right now – he's a backup at the center spot and, and the guard spot. I mean, best man win. I get that part. But they drafted Mason Cole in the third round. He played over 1,000 snaps. He's been hitting the weight room. So, you want to build around those yeah, guys. Yeah, but they drafted Evan Baim to be the starter of the future. And where and, is he at? Well, Shipley beat him out. But he's not on the roster, though. I understand that, but I'm just saying I, I wouldn't be so quick to just hand the keys to to Mason Cole. I'm just saying they they could they could have not signed a, a guard in free agency and moved Mason Cole to guard if they thought that much in Shipley. I'm not saying I think Shipley's great uh, depth. He's a great locker room guy. I love his attitude. Another guy that's going to bring his hard hat to work. Um, but I, I think Cole and injuries occur. Well, let's mm -hmm. be honest. So what happened to Ship last year was devastating. But Mason Cole got an opportunity. 
I like the fact that Shipley can play three different positions. He can play the center position. He can make the calls. And if you have somebody else in there, um, he can play both guards. So I think there's a spot for him on this roster. I just don't think uh, right now it's open competition. Now, as far as backups, specifically at the tackle spots and guard spots, you're looking at Corey Cunningham, Max Garcia, Zach Goldich, Colby Gossett, and Jeremy Vunovich. All of those with starting experience. Cunningham had six starts last season before he went down to injury. Gossett, four starts. Vunovich, two starts. And Goldich appeared in two games. So there is a list of five players as far as backing up. And then you got some other guys on the roster as well. Justin Evans, Will Holden, Will House, Reese Odiambu, Coleman, Shelton. Uh, those five, Evans, House, and Shelton, were all signed to future contracts at the end of last season. So, uh you're not going to keep all 16, but 16 is the number that they have on the roster, and we would expect that number to increase, specifically come draft time and undrafted rookie free agents. Yeah, the Cardinals usually bring 15 guys to camp. You want to have th- first string, second string, and third string. Um, I do anticipate they'll make some roster moves of the, the bottom list. Now, if you look at the list and we put Shipley over there on the other side, uh, they dress eight on game day. So Shipley will be your backup center. Mar- uh, Max Garcia will be your backup guard. And then Corey Cunningham will be your uh, swing tackles. And then, uh, as you mentioned, Colby Gassat, Gassett, he'll be in the mix. I, they really like him. And then, as you mentioned, Craig, whether it's a, a draft pick, an undrafted free agent, another veteran uh, uh, player that's available maybe in, in late August, early September. So, Keep 10 in the roster, 8 dress on game day, and they got their swing tackle, they got their backup guards, and they got a backup center. Again, I like where they're at, and we're only a few weeks into the offseason in this case. Uh, only the second week in free agency. And even if you're just on the roster and you're fighting for a position to make the roster, keep in mind what happened last season with this offensive line. Ten different five-man combinations, eight over the final ten games. Seven of the offensive linemen landed on injured reserve, including your four projected starters entering training camp. So there is hopefully, knock on wood, that this Cardinals team doesn't have to deal with all of that in 2019, but you always want to be ready just in case. And the Cardinals right now stockpiling offensive linemen, if you will, as far as trying to move that position to a position of strength as opposed to going, what do we do now? Well, and we always talk about next man up. I I, I don't think there'd be a drop-off between Cole and Shipley just because of experience, but Shipley is a guy that's going to have to get out maybe in the second layer here. He's gonna, maybe he's not as athletic and maybe in the Arians offense where Cole can get to the second layer. Um, I think a healthy Max Garcia – could be a starter, not a huge drop off from Sweezy. They're, they both have a little dog in them. Corey Cunningham, there's a big question mark coming off an injury, but we know that he played right and left tackle last year. So we always talk about next man up. I think you can you can um, not afford it. I think you can deal with it at certain positions, but you don't want to lose your left tackle during the season. And of course, versatility. Because yes. you want guys to be able to play more than one position. Flexibility, versatility, correct. And that saves you. A roster spot as opposed to just someone who can just play center or just play tackle. And they'll have a couple uh, offensive linemen on on the practice squad, whether usually you want to get a tackle and a guy that can do long snapper, center, and guard. So eventually they'll have 12, uh, uh, 10 on the 53, and then probably two on the practice squad. So you want to look ahead if they have one of those injuries. One of those guys who can play multiple positions, J.R. Sweezy, who late last week told azcardinals.com that his signing with the Cardinals was an easy decision. J.R. Sweezy, offensive line, and this will be my eighth year. It was an easy choice, honestly. Uh, they were on it from the time that I was uh, able to be a free agent. They, they were talking to my agents and whatnot, and uh, I've seen the success of this program, and I'm Glad to be a part of it now. The way things are kind of flipping around here, you can you can tell things are, are changing and, and starting to come on the up, if you will, and uh, just excited to be a part of it. I'm very aggressive. I play whistle to whistle, and I get in trouble for it sometimes, even though I don't mean to. It just happens. Uh, I play hard. I'm just me at the end of the day. You know, I'm, uh, I'm going to be who I am, be who I've always been, turn on the film. You can watch it. Now I'm going to be doing the Arizona jersey. Being able to do what I love to do and, and uh, have people uh, enjoy watching it and, and getting, getting uh, enjoyment out of it is, is a pretty cool feeling. I'm proud to be an Arizona Cardinal. 
quote, plays whistle to whistle, unquote. I say the echo of the whistle. Okay, so if it's a long you're still engaged. whistle, it's – okay, I, I got you. If you're you. still engaged yeah, and you right. hear the echo of the whistle, you can still uh, maintain toughness and power on your opponent. Um, Jeremy – uh, fill this in that you're, you're all over this Florida stuff, okay, with Garcia, uh, Gilbert, and now Humphreys. Humphreys. Do you realize the Cardinals have three Sun Devils on their roster? Can you name them? I could. Suggs, Suggs, and Suggs. No. <laughs> Gonzalez and DJ Foster. And you're going to say they're going to get a fourth in Harry, right? Uh, I didn't say that. No, I know, but hey – would you consider him at 33? Uh, I, absolutely. I would. Yeah. Tanya, we need to figure out a way to get into that draft room. <laughs> Stay in your lane. <laughs> Just like me. Just uh, on, on Sweezy, though. Yeah. He, you see how he is going against Geno Atkins? There's just something about him, and without you know having met him or anything, he, just the way he talks and just acts. Yeah. Surprised it, he it, isn't all missing about, any teeth. It's all about – when you said it, winning one-on-one -on -one matchups, yeah. and he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that yeah. he blocks his man or his man is not going to get to the quarterback. And you always talk about that dog mentality. Well, yeah. he seems like he has yeah, they, that in him. And they've acquired a few. That he he reminds me of a guy like working at maybe like in, in Texas at a bar, and he's the bouncer, and you're like, I could take that dude. And then you have no idea yes. when he comes at you, like you're, you're going to get into a cage match with him. And last man standing, he's walking out. No nonsense. No. Once the once no. the game kicks off, no. it's all about. And you got some was... six foot six guy, and he's, I could take him out. And the next thing you know, he's he's walking home with a bloody nose. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna do your John Facenda voice here now? No, 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 no. NFL Films, Jr. Sweezy. Yeah. Is I, I just you know and the fact. And we mentioned this uh, last week on the show. Not only is it a beneficial move for the Cardinals because it helps fill a need, but you're also now hurting a team within your division yeah. because he played four out of his five seasons with the Seahawks. And all the talk in Seattle is that they did not want him to go. I just don't know on how much they made it worth his while to stay. You know, when we get a chance to talk to him, I wonder what it was like going against uh, Kim Dichie when he was healthy. You know, I mean, obviously you got to figure out what side he was lining up on, but sometimes they, they run a stunt, so you have to pick up the assignment there. But I would love to know when he was healthy because I, I thought Robert had a little bit of breakout season. Now he's on the shelf, but I'm not giving up on him. I, I know you, you people look at it like he if he hasn't done it now, the light bulb hasn't gone off. I get it. Um, I just think there's something there, and they I don't, they don't have to, but I, I hope he steps up and gives them something this year because they can use him. Well, it's availability. Yeah. I mean, that's Endurability. your your biggest talent yeah. sometimes is available. Well, Alex Gibbs, a former offensive line coach, and he really came up with that that zone blocking scheme that was really effective with Terrell Davis and, and Elway winning those Super Bowls was, I want to see you in uniform for 16 national anthems. Stand right next to me so because I, I can count on you then. In uniform, not just in no, street clothes. No, exactly. In uniform, you know, helmet to the side, hand over the heart. Let's do it. But he said, if I can't count on you for the national anthem in uniform, then I got no use for you. Bird Gang sound off. Still time to get your questions in here on this Monday. Hashtag cards cover two. Hashtag cards cover do two. We'll do that a little bit later on in the show here as we broadcast Monday afternoon from the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center and doing so in our Bose QC35s. Go to Bose.com for more information. You bring up Robert Kimdichie, perhaps. Uh, benefit from some of the influences now on what the Cardinals did defensively here this offseason and specifically well the biggest move as far as name value is the addition of Terrell Suggs 16 seasons in Baltimore and he told azcardinals.com it was time to turn the page my name is Terrell Suggs and this is my 17th year I play linebacker and defensive end I just felt that like it was time to turn the page and my agent said, well, if you're not going to play in Baltimore, where would you want to play? And I said, if I'm not going to play in Baltimore, then I'm going to go home and play and come play for the Arizona Cardinals. You know, you got a young, excited, ferocious defense, and uh, you got kind of a, a mastermind at the helm. So it's going to be very exciting. Now what do you think you can bring to it? Um, I don't know, some wisdom. You know, definitely uh, 
a, a kind of a dog mentality, you know, and um, and it just kind of add to what y'all already have. I'm proud to be an Arizona card. It sounds like, you know, whenever that career is over, he's not going to go play anywhere else. I would love to see him here for a few years. Well, what about the first year? Obviously, when you get to that age and, you know, I'll, you know, he's going to be 37 in October. October, correct. October, so you never know, go week to week. But I, I, I like the fact that, you know, it finally happened. And, you know, the feeling is that he could be a, a – I wouldn't say a mentor because I don't think he's – I mean, if somebody looks up to him and asks him questions, yes. I think he can be um, – a great um, guy to lean on if you're Robert Kimdichi. Well, remember when we had Suggs in here last week and he talked about, you know, obviously the disappointment and not getting drafted by the Cardinals and then getting selected by the Ravens at number 10 overall and then looking at that Ravens roster wondering how do I fit in because you had talent galore on that defensive side of the ball. But he talked about what a Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and he just listed off uh, half a dozen names that helped him mature as a player and then more importantly maybe even as a person off the field and perhaps now those lessons that he learned he can pass on not just to Kim Dietschy, but to everyone else on that defensive side yeah and, and, I, and I appreciate honesty from athletes and I thought he was very honest when he said it was good that I went there he wasn't knocking the Cardinals that wasn't his choice that they decided to go a different direction um, but it, it, he was a young man here, probably a little bit immature based on what happened before the draft. And, you know, he's a guy that obviously was very uh, effective in high school and in college. But, you know, going there and leaving home a little bit, maybe not having to tell people no and I got to play football this Sunday, I, I think that really earmarked his career and it molded him as a person. Um, but I, not only a guy like that, I mean, you got Brooks Reed in here. We talked to Jordan Hicks. I mean, all these guys just seem like they're a wealth of knowledge. And so, I, again, Robert has to do it for himself. But if, if somebody's saying, hey, listen, you know, you're part of the team. We're pulling the rope in the same direction. We need you. Uh, maybe he feels more into it. But, you know, it's a big year for him, and hopefully he can come back from this injury. But I, I, I think some of the veteran guys they brought in here – are going to be really good for the young guys. When you look at what Suggs has done just in the last three years, and people always point to three years because it was 2015 in which he had uh, that Achilles tendon injury. But since 2015, you look at 2016, 66% of the snaps, 2017, 77%. Last year, 72%. He is a starter, but when you talk about a rotation on the defensive line, you're not expecting those guys. And I'm even throwing in Corey Peters. You're not even expecting those guys to play 80 85, 90 snaps a game because you want to be uh, as close to 100% or have enough gas in the tank for the fourth quarter. And yes, I understand that you know what you do in the first quarter can also sometimes dictate you know the direction of a ball game. But you want to make sure you have your best guys late in ball games. But if you have a nice mix of six or seven guys that you can freely rotate in, then all of a sudden that you've got you know, Corey Peters and a Terrell Suggs and maybe Kim Dietschy towards the later half of the season on the field in crunch time? Well, if you look at the outside linebackers, now last year the Cardinals thought they did a good job rotating those defensive tackles. You know, you had – and, of course, they were in a 4-3 defense. But in the perfect scenario, let's say hypothetically they stay at one, they keep Rosen, you draft Bosa. So your rotation – um, and Bosa could put his hand in the dirt if they wanted him to play there. And Suggs can too as well. Exactly. I mean, but let's just say hypothetically, we get a little greedy here. You would have Jones and Bosa and then Suggs and Reed. I mean, I, that's a pretty good tandem. Um, and, and you're right. I mean, but you want your playmakers out there to make plays when the game's on the line. I, I agree with you. You know, that sack in the first half quarter could be just as effective if you got a lead in the fourth. But you want to make sure they're fresh. And so they're going to play the majority of the snaps. And, again, these guys are not just one-dimensional. They're, they're, they're able to, to stop the run and set the edge, especially guys like Suggs and Reed. And then you get a guy like Chandler Jones where he, he gets a little swim move on you and he gets to the quarterback. So it's encouraging what they're doing. Now it's a matter of execution. Now Suggs was maybe the sentimental uh, number one story last week because of him coming back home with perhaps the most important signing, at least defensively, was the fact that an inside linebacker, the Cardinals picked up Jordan Hicks. Five seasons in Philadelphia. Of course, injuries have taken a toll on his career, and that's part of the reason why he told azcardinals.com he feels he still has something to prove. Jordan Hicks, linebacker, going into my yep. fifth year. 
It's been a journey. Uh, I've, I've battled some injury. I've became a husband, um, a father, um, all in my four years of being in the NFL. And so for me, uh, it's very special to, to be here signing this this contract. Uh, I'm going to be coming here on Carnival. It. There it is. Thank you very appreciate much. It. Appreciate it. I think I still have some to prove. I believe when I'm uh, when I play and I'm healthy and I'm out there on the field that you know I'm, I'm the best linebacker on the field. I love to be physical. I love to uh, come downhill. Um, I love to make plays. You know, ultimately, I, I think that's that's my style. It's a playmaker. Um, pride myself and if I get my hands on the ball, it's mine. I've been on a team where we've won a Super Bowl, um, and it was amazing years there. But I felt like there was a new chapter in my life that, that needed to be turned over, and uh, this is this is it. Coach Davis, Coach Billy Davis, uh, was my defensive coordinator my, my rookie year in Philly. Um, so I played for him, understand him, uh, love him. Arizona is, is gaining a uh, family man, a philanthropic person, a uh, somebody who loves the game of football, somebody who's, who's going to give my everything to the city, uh, to this team, this organization. I'm proud to be an Arizona Cardinal. Special cameo appearance by Mike Jarecki in that Jordan wow, Hicks pick. Very nice. Now I am seeing. And let me make a correction. I, I gave Hicks uh, an extra season in Philadelphia, four years as opposed to five. All right, go ahead. You know, you know, usually, and I think it's it's hard to do this for the draft. I want instant uh, grades and a little bit of microwave society, so you want instant results. But you know, you can project how someone's going to fit in a certain scheme, and you can project what he's done and. When teams are signing these contracts, they're projecting what you're going to do in the future, especially when you're drafting a guy. Um, but we, we all know that C.J. Mosley was head and shoulders above everyone else, and then Quan Alexander. Now he did miss 78 tackles throughout his career in Tampa, coming off an ACL. I think it's really a good signing for the Niners. But you look at this signing, very uh, cap-friendly, both player and team. Um, he's going to be a three-down backer. He's going to wear the you know the green uh, sticker on his helmet. He's going to be making the calls, getting guys lined up, and he's the perfect age. And he's motivated. He, you can just see the excitement, and he, he was so excited, you know, because when Cleos was here, he wanted to be the guy. And you know, somebody told me recently he can run for mayor in Jacksonville and would win. He doesn't want to be the mayor. He wants to be the leader in this locker room. And I think he's a, that was a really good pickup. And he's the only guy that got a four-year deal. All forgot a three-year deal, and these other guys, you know, they're prove-it deals. But if you play well, and I think Suggs is a great example, um, depending on how he does, you would like to extend that guy going into next year. But I really like this signing. Uh, we all thought Brandon uh, Brandon Marshall from the Broncos. We thought KJ Wright because he's been a you know a thorn in the side over the years. But this is a really good signing. Here is uh, what Greg Rosenthal of NFL.com wrote about as far as the list of best free agent contracts. And he listed Hicks and the Cardinals writing, quote, sometimes value comes in comparison to rest to the rest of the market. Hicks is an awfully similar player to C.J. Mosley, yet he received less than half the guaranteed money. Quan Alexander also got more money, yet he is coming off a torn ACL and is not as consistent as Hicks down to down, end quote. Now, of course, we talked about the injuries, and Hicks acknowledged as much, as much and, and said the onus was on him to make sure he keeps himself on the field. But he did start 40 of 43 games, and if you could just uh, you know forget about the injuries for a minute, you can't. But if you just look at what he has done when he is on the field, and that is being very productive, grades out very, very well, pro football focus, not only stopping the run, but his coverage skills, and that's something that you've always pointed to, MJ, as far as an inside linebacker, is how having that guy who can drop back and specifically cover tight ends because we've seen far too often here over the last five, ten years that tight ends roam the seam down the middle and they're wide open not only for first down catches but for huge chunk plays. Yeah, for, for a guy his size, when you you watch him cover a tight end, it's all about you know leverage and coverage off the line. It, you don't see the tight end separate, and he's really good. I mean, he's, he's had seven interceptions and seven passes defensed. But he can cover tight ends down the field, and that's why when you got a three-down backer, meaning he doesn't come off the field, teams are going to try to match that up. And one thing you won't see this year is the Cardinals playing three safeties. You're going to see them playing three corners, and maybe a lot of the times Hicks is going to lead this team in tackles because he's going to load up the box and let your corners cover these guys down the field. But if a tight end wants to go over the middle, 
he's right there for him. Again, seven interceptions in his career, seven passes defense. And he brought up Bill Davis, and he did so in his introductory press conference. And this is someone that, yeah, he's a position coach with the Cardinals, but he was – uh, Hicks's defensive coordinator in Philadelphia in 2015. His rookie year. His rookie year. So someone that certainly has made a mark on Hicks's career, even going back four years now to where, yes, one of the reasons why the Cardinals is because, well, that's the guy that I identify with who – you know, maybe he took him aside during that rookie year or did something to where Hicks in the back of his mind saying, yeah, if I give him the chance, I would love to play for you again. Yeah, he said being the coordinator, it's not like being a position coach. Correct. But the coordinator dresses the entire room. The coordinator and the position coach come up with the game plan. And I got to assume he was involved in a game plan every week. So, And now it's his position coach. So he knows his, his tendencies. He knows – you know, what he's going to have to explain to the players, and it's going to take some time, but all that stuff should be figured out when we get to training camp, if not the regular season. I mean, it has to be. You can't, we can't have the miscommunications we had last year. As we continue to look back at the first full week of free agency and the signings the Cardinals have made, we'll take a look going back to the offense and, of course, uh, the offensive line, the number one priority, but number two was finding more playmakers to team up with a Larry Fitzgerald, a Christian Kirk, a David Johnson, and they found one in Kevin White. Now, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it is someone that I think the Cardinals are willing to uh, extend – uh, a hand to and say, all right, let's see what you can do. Uh, I don't want to say take a flyer on him, but, but it based off his limited games played in the NFL, maybe it is uh, okay and to, to put that tag on him. Like, hey, you know, we'll give you an opportunity, and if you can produce, great. If not, then you know we'll continue to look on. But White explained to azcardinals.com why he feels he and the Cardinals are a perfect fit. Kevin White, wide receiver, going to my fifth year. I was super excited. I uh, obviously love Arizona and growing up watching uh, Larry play all the time. So uh, I feel like it was a perfect fit and uh, flown in this morning and uh, signed today. Being able to work, work with Larry and uh, just being a part of something new. And um, I think it's, it's on a rise. So I, I definitely want to be a part of it and hopefully have a big role. Uh, what excites me about this offense is uh, being able to take shots downfield, um, take advantage of one-on-ones, um, just getting the ball in, in my hands and um, just having fun being a part of the offense, whether it's blocking or, or doing whatever is asking me. Um, I'm, I'm excited for a new chapter. I'm proud to be an Arizona Cardinal. Yeah, I mean, he played at the, in the air raid offense at West Virginia. Um, Larry and Larry's former agent who passed away, Eugene Parker, you know, Larry um, knew uh, Kevin coming out. And um, so Larry and him shared the same agent. Uh, low risk, high reward. I, I would say they're definitely taking a flyer on him. Now, what they're going to do with him, as I was told, is they want to simplify things for him. And they want him to play faster. Okay, and he he's going to line up on the outside. Don't know if he's a number three receiver, fourth receiver. We'll let them figure that part out. Play a little bit faster. Um, he's good on the 50-50 balls because of his size and his strength. He's just got to stay healthy. But they 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 don't want him thinking as much. They want him playing faster. And, you know, take some shots on the field. Bid physical receiver, uh, obviously a high pick, hasn't lived up to the billing. But they're excited. They just they just don't want him thinking. They want him reacting. Well, his size, 6'3", 216. And I don't know if he still runs a 4'3", which he did at the Combine in 2015. But there is someone who has the height. And then if you can add on the speed where you're just running down the left side or the right side and you got your quarterback throwing the ball up in the air and you can out jump the defensive back or safety that's covering you. So, you know, look, it, it's it's not going to solve or, you know, all of a sudden now you're like, okay, we're done at wide receiver. But now you've got Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, Kevin White, and then, okay, well, there's Chad Williams, there's Trent Sherfield, Jalen Tolliver, uh, not a lot of, I guess, weapons in which you say, uh, I fear that guy or are going to show up on the other not team's a, scouting not, report and say, okay, we need to take him away. My guess is it still fits, and then to a certain extent, maybe Kirk is is reaching that status, but he needs to do it on a more consistent basis. Yeah, all the guys you mentioned, lack of experience. I mean, it's just that's what it is, and you got to give Sherfield and Tolliver a lot of credit last year. They, they they were thrown into the mix. It's not easy when you got a couple different quarterbacks, and 
you know, the routes are different, and for, whether you're an XYZ and Farrell Cooper, we'll see if he can become a guy that, you know, we know he's going to dress on game day. So, yeah, I mean, listen, White has every opportunity to come in here. I, you know, who knows how many catches. Um, now you got a couple weapons in the red zone on the, on, on the back shoulder or the fade. Of course, I'm throwing it 10 out of 10 times to Larry Fitzgerald, but I, I think he'll help. Um, but he's got, he's got to earn it. He's got to make the team. And, you know, you, we don't know about his work ethic and – you know, I'm sure he's been humbled because he's a former first-round pick that hasn't lived up to the billing. But I'm encouraged from the standpoint he played in the air raid offense so he knows some of the concepts and principles of what they're trying to accomplish on offense. And I think he understands the opportunity he's been given as well. Over the yes. weekend, tweeted, quote, never let injuries or people's opinion change the way you think of yourself, unquote. So, again, he needs to prove it. But going back to the wide receiver group as a whole, I'm glad you brought up Farrell Cooper because that's one name that I don't think gets talked about enough when we talk about wide receivers. Yes, his experience is in the return game, but I'm going to start throwing him in that wide receiver mix because at this point, I'll, I'll steal your phrase, flood the position. If he can get the job done, then you can find or you can still use him as a return guy and you, but, or maybe find someone else. But give him the opportunity – as well just to see because you don't know unless you're given an opportunity and I think a lot of what's going to happen in 2019 at certain positions and and I think wide receiver might be number one given an opportunity what can you show us yeah and you look at a guy like Chad Williams he's been given multiple opportunities and, and I think when you look at Tolliver and, and Sherfield, they made the most of their opportunities we know they're going to address five Wide receivers on game day, you know, barring some kind of injuries, I think they're going to keep seven, and that's unusual. You should keep five or six. And if if Farrell Cooper is the kick returner, which we believe he is, and Christian Kirk, well, that's two wide receivers that are going to be part of your top five. Throw Fitz in there. Now we're at three. So, you know, like I said, flood the position. You know, maybe each week it's different. You know, if, if we see five wide, that is truly the air raid offense. You want to get your playmakers on the field. Maybe you're trailing in the two-minute drill, the four-minute drill. Um, then maybe go five wide and you have Cooper on the field along with uh, White and Fitz and Kirk and try to add some extra bodies. Now the final free agent signing last week we want to touch on here before we get to the Bird Gang sound off, and that is quarterback Brett Hundley. Remember when Mike Lennon was released, all of a sudden the quarterback, uh, the Cardinals had a need at quarterback, and it's been filled by Hundley. And like Suggs, Hundley is coming home. Here's how he described it to azcardinals.com. Brett Hundley quarterback going into year five. So this was like the craziest story. I was coming from LA uh, to surprise my family out here. And as soon as I land, I get a call from my agent saying, hey, terms are agreed upon. You're signing like tomorrow. And then the whole surprise from like me being here was like, I'm staying now. Like I'm here, I'm signing with the Cardinals. Then it was, yeah, it's unreal. It's unbelievable. I mean, to bring home all the Arizona talent and to, for all of us to here to be playing this year, uh, it's, it's crazy, but uh, it, it'll be a fun opportunity. I played in this kind of offense, you know, in college. And so for me, like, I just get juice thinking about it. I mean, it's a fast-paced offense, which I like. It's, um, you know, getting the ball out of my hands and just letting people do what they do. You know, get the ball in the playmaker's hands and let them just have fun. For me, it, it'll be, it's football at the end of the day. I mean, it, it is playing in front of friends and family, but it's football. and. Uh, Playing back home, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit more uh, emotional, but at the same time, like once you cross those white lines, it's back to business. I'm proud to be an Arizona Cardinal. Hunley, like Rosen, UCLA products, and now the two of them will be learning a brand new offense, but it is somewhat similar, as Hunley mentioned, and he brought up Noel Mazzoni in his press conference late last week. And again, it's, it, 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 it's not going to be completely foreign to a lot of these guys, what Kingsbury wants to do. A lot of it is going to be terminology, but at least it'll be something that registers in the back of your mind, perhaps like, oh yeah, I remember something similar to that. We used to do this way, but now he wants us to do it that way. I think it all helps when you have a little background knowledge. Yeah, and I made this comment last week, and it's really no knock on, on Kyler Murray because he's a little bit different skill set than Josh Rosen. But I, I think and it kind of makes sense, and maybe I'm just connecting dots because they both played at UCLA. Uh, they both played in, in different systems. Now Josh did challenge the coaching staff. You know, he played in three different systems kind of to go to a more prototype system. But I think he has a similar skill set. Uh, maybe he's not as accurate as Josh is, not willing to throw in those tight windows, that 60-40 ball, he says. 
Um, but mobility, RPOs, I think they're very similar. Now, obviously, Kyle Murray is a guy that can do a lot more. Uh, a lot of his decisions were, what, close to 90% in the pocket. Um, he can run. He's, I mean, uh, he hasn't run a 40, and I don't know if he'll ever run one, but he's going to run one in the NFL. So interesting, but I, you could see the direction they're going uh, based on Mike Lennon. I thought he did a decent job last year when he came in there, got the Cardinals in the end zone. You know, he's going to be a career backup. Um, but I do like bringing Hundley back. The Cardinals did like him coming out of college. Unfortunately, they weren't able to draft him. Yeah, he has played 15 games, including nine starts, went three and six during those nine starts, and that was in 2017 with the Green Bay Packers filling in for Aaron Rodgers. Completed 61% of his passes for 1,679 yards, eight touchdowns, and nine interceptions. And that is a quick look back at the first full week of free agency with regards to what the Cardinals did. Of course, we'll keep an eye on it here on Cards Cover 2 as we broadcast here on this Monday afternoon from the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center and doing so in our Bose QC35s. Go to Bose.com for more information. All right, it is that time. Time for the Bird Gang to sound off using the hashtag Cards Cover 2. Hashtag Cards Cover 2 using the number 2 to get involved and the show will begin with Twitter, one of our loyal followers here on Cardinals Cover 2 at Cardinals underscore 31. And I knew we were going to get a question uh, about this, but uh, do you think the Cardinals will have any interest in Vontez Perfect, who was released earlier today by Cincinnati? Played at Arizona State and a change of scenery and coaching might be what he needs to help his discipline. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, Marvin Lewis took him on his wing when he came here. Uh, his daughter goes to ASU, and so, I mean, I I don't know. I, I haven't heard his name, and, and I always tell people when somebody gets released, uh, every team in the league puts a free agent grade on the guy. I mean, right now they're set at the starting linebacker. You know, does he end up in Oakland? Maybe that's a fit for him. Does he end up in New England? Um, I haven't heard his name, so I really don't know, but I don't know. I, I'm assuming he wants to be a starter. Oh, and that's the thing. If you come here to the Cardinals, you're yeah. not going to be a starter. No, so at, at, at this point in time, I just haven't heard anything to connect the dots. Moving to Instagram, user wants to know as we get back to the wide receiver discussion, if Nikhil Harry and DK Metcalf go in the first round, what are some other targets in the draft the Cardinals might be able to fill with regards to the wide receiver position? Well, I would say Hollywood, Hollywood Brown from uh, Oklahoma. I would see uh, Debo Samuel is another guy. Uh, maybe Andy Isabella, maybe in the third or fourth round. He's a really good slot receiver. So. You're going to see speed guys go at the top. Uh, I'm not a big DK Metcalf fan. I'm impressed what he did. Um, but he doesn't really run routes. He's more of a north and south guy versus east and west guy. Um, but I like Brown. He, he's he's got to take the top off the defense. He played with Murray at, at Oklahoma. So um, I do think they'll address that. It may be one or two wide receivers um, in, in the draft, and we'll have to wait and see in free agency and undrafted free agency. be interesting if, you know, typically once a couple of – position whatever position it is there's come off run. the ground there's a rana because everyone's worried about oh we better get this guy now because that position group is not dropping yeah and again i think the top guys will be speed guys and then you want to get some some big physical receivers a guy that can maybe you know not speed guys take the top off the defense but physical guys can win those 50 50 balls bird gang sound off and questions continuing here on instagram and more draft talk User wants to know, will the Cards still have the best player first mentality come draft day? Yeah, I mean, if you look at Kyle Murray, I mean, I'm sure he's on some team's boards as the best player in the draft. I think Nick Bosa is the best player regardless of position. Yeah, I mean, but there's also a need. Like, if, if they haven't, you know, they, they address the wide receiver position, but it's one guy. They, they, they would like to get some linemen in the draft. If you have a lineman, that you have a first-round grade, and he's there at 33. Yeah, you take best available, but there's also a slight of need involved, in my opinion, every time. Last question here via Instagram. If the Cardinals do elect to trade down, how far down is too far? Ooh, good that's question. a good question. Really good question. Um, I don't know how many guys they have ranked um, you know, in their top ten, um, but you start moving down past five or six. Now, if a couple quarterbacks come off the board, it trumps that. You start moving down, and you get the second or third best player at that position where you had an opportunity to take the best player at any position except for corner. <laughs> I'll just say this with regards to there will be one or two players that in a year or five years from now drafted in the teens, maybe late 20s. You're like, 
why didn't X team select them? Or how did 10 different teams pass on X player? Happens every single year. No, Roquan you, Smith was not a top 10 draft pick. No, and listen, um, there's going to be generational players in this draft. I mean, when it's all said and done, there will be some Hall of Famers from this draft. We just don't know. And that's why you take someone that you have rated higher as opposed to someone in that second or third tier, I at least based off what you know right now. I remember asking a, a coach in the league when Aaron Curry came out. He said, generational player will be in the league 10 to 12 years. Um, wouldn't surprise me he makes three or four uh, all pros. And he was a bust. Pass rusher. And he was completely wrong. Completely wrong. What is even close to that? So yeah. you, you just don't know. Again, what's between the ears? Meaning, can they process information? Um, do, and then the other thing, what's in the heart? Do they love football? I mean, are they want to be good or do they want to be great? You just don't know that. Taking a test or some interview in somebody, you just don't know it. Appreciate the uh, Bird Gang sounding off here on this Monday using the hashtag cards cover two. Hashtag cards cover two with the number two to get involved in the show. And we'll go do that again on Wednesday as well. And that's going to wrap up this edition of Cardinals Cover 2 here on this Monday. Special thanks to those behind the scenes, Tim Delaney, Jim Omohundro, Devin Henry, Jeremy Schnell, and Jackson Sipes. See, I remember Jackson this time. Good job, Jackson. Good job. Friday show, we almost lost. Well, we almost forgot about Jackson, but uh, it's it's written down right here. See? All, In bold, too. All the, all the fellows behind the glass did a great job. For Mike Jarecki, I'm Craig Real. We will talk to you on Wednesday here on Cardinals Cover 2.